Today, I've set myself the almost impossible task of making an 1830s bonnet and the pelerine cape using only stash material in a week and a half. Will I meet the challenge? Let's find out. Hey y'all, Jackie here, and welcome to Fantastical Follies, where we goof off and sew things. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back to the insanity, my friends. Today, we're gonna get our accessories on and make a bonnet and cape or pelerine to match my 1830s back dress. This is a last minute project and my budget is small, so I decided to challenge myself by not spending any money on the materials for this project. I'm going to use buckram and millinery wire for the base, which I keep stock, use the leftover fabric from my dress and any trim I already have on hand. The only thing I allowed myself to purchase was the pattern itself, which I bought on sale. So what's the deal with this? This summer, I met some folks from Houston who invited me to attend Dickens on the Strand, which is a Victorian festival that happens in Galveston. Cool, new friends, kind of near me, and an actual historical event to go to. I mean, I can only wear these costumes around the house for so long before I wanna run around and show them off. But the problem is that I don't have any Victorian clothes and because I planned my projects so far in advance, I didn't have time to make a whole Victorian kit before the first weekend in December. Ugh. But I decided that I'd sport my 1830s bat dress since technically Victoria was crowned in the late 30s. Okay, so this is still not Victorian, but it'll do pig. I didn't make that decision until like two weeks ago. So then I was faced with, well, Texas weather is unpredictable and this dress is short sleeved. So I came up with the idea to do a bonnet and pelerine, which would make me look more legit and keep me warm if the weather turns gross. And so the challenge was born. Bonnet on a budget and made within a week and a half, so I had time to film and edit and upload this for you before I left for the festival itself. Bonnets in the 1830s had very wide brims and crazy decorations. This will come as no surprise, as one definitely had to balance the giant skirts and giant sleeves with a giant thing on one's head. Pelerines were popular in the 1830s and were often made of delicate organdy or lace, or could also be made to specifically match the gown one wore underneath. Sizes and shapes varied, but all were suitably frilly and as nuts as the rest of the ensemble. Now this is not my first hat, but it is my first bonnet. So this is going to be less of a how-to and more of a let's figure this out together kind of project. Let's start this crazy venture. All right, so this is a hot mess, but I couldn't figure out a better way to lay it out and show you. This is the leftover fabric that I have from my dress. It's a lot of weird little strips, but I think it should be enough. I may have to be a little creative. So the ultimate goal is to make the bonnet out of the orange. In a perfect world, we would make the cape reversible orange on one side, cream on the other. I may have to piece the orange lining. I will get back to y'all when it's all done. And then I thought better of things and decided to make a mock-up first before I cut out of some random cardboard I had lying around. With my hair in a bun, I tried my little tapey contraption on. Is it fitting right? I have no heckin' idea, so I'm just gonna go with it. Once the fashion fabric was cut out, I tackled the buckram. First, I needed to iron out the creases. The instructions say to spray it with water, so I started doing that, but realized that since this is modern buckram and not historical, which is stiffened with glue, that was a bad idea, so I stopped. <laughs> Notice I'm using a presser cloth for this because I didn't want to get any residue on my iron. Once the buckram is cooled, I cut out the crown top, the crown body, and the brim out of buckram. Then I very carefully marked all of my lines. Reed would have been the material used here, but millinery wire does just fine. I always try and buy a few yards of these supplies when I'm ordering other things to keep handy for times like these. And I'm glad I did, because if I'd had to purchase this stuff for this project specifically, it wouldn't have gotten done in time. What I'm doing here is whip stitching the wire down to the edge of the brim. I'm not doing it correctly. It should be stitched to the very edge of the buckram and I'm doing it about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Don't ask me why. Here's all the wire done. Two rows of wire on the brim, then wire around the top of the crown, then one in the center front of the crown. I didn't have enough millinery wire, so I used some black wire doubled for the rest of the crown support. It's ugly, but this will all get covered up. Next, join the crown together. Overlap the center back seam on the crown base, then zigzag stitch over both raw edges. I did this with the machine. It was a challenge. Then sew wire to the base of the crown. Finally, add one more vertical piece of wire right at the center back between the two zigzagged edges. This was also pretty awkward. Got a feeling that's gonna be the case for most of this project. Mm. 
Now attach the top of the crown to the base. You'll whip stitch around the wire. This is why you're supposed to put the wire right at the edge. In the end, the base of my crown was a little big for the top of it, and so I had to kind of squish it in. Hopefully the felt will fix that up. Last night, I assembled the base of the bonnet. Basically, I sewed the brim to the hat and the top to the brim. Here it is. It's looking a little wonky, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not really sure why or how it's buckling like this. I think it has something to do with the angle of this wire, but I've tried to fix it, I can't. I can't figure out how to fix it. I also had some issues with the crown being a little too small for this part and i'm not sure if that's because of how i sewed the wire onto this but i took it out and put it back on twice and the buckram was starting to fray and i just decided we're gonna fudge it and hopefully utilize the felt to smooth everything out that being said it doesn't look bad when on um, this is obviously just the very base layer my theory is if for some reason there's weird spots i can just cover it with decorations and hide any flaws with it so I think we're good to go. The plan for today is to do the mulling. Mulling is not sticking the hat in a pot with spices and warming it slightly for a nice toasty winter drink. Mulling is covering it with felt or flannel. Now the felt that I have is just standard craft felt. I don't really think that that is what you're supposed to use, but that's what I have. I do have some flannel in my trunk, but it's blue plaid and I'm concerned that you'll be able to see the pattern through the fabric. So I'm gonna use the craft felt. The only problem is, as you can see here, I have to piece it because these are standard eight and a half by 11 inch sheets and there's no way that they're going to fit all of these pieces. I really wish I had some spray adhesive to adhere this to the hat instead of having to baste it, but I don't have any. In the line of the challenge that I put myself, I'm not gonna go and buy spray adhesive for this. I'm just gonna baste it and be as cautious as possible and fingers crossed it'll work. Um, that is my goal for today. It's a bit of a challenge. Okay, don't get angry with me. Today is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving and I'm off. So after I just filmed that last bit, I packed up my stuff and drove to the other side of town. We have a craft reuse store. I've had a bag of fabric in my car trunk since the very beginning of 2021. For the few of you who were with me in the very, very beginning of my YouTube channel, you will know what I'm talking about. I've been putting off going to this place for two years. So I went and as I was getting in my car, I remembered the fiasco with my 1640 stays where I wasted like four and a half hours on my birthday trying to reorganize the boning from my mock-up into my original stays instead of spending the extra 10 bucks to get another bag of boning. And so on the way up, I bought some spray adhesive. Fine, it's a tool. That still counts, right? After I dropped off my fabric, I went into the store looking for trim for my mantula, which I didn't find, but on the shelf just looming at me. This is five yards of felt. It was $4.50. I know I wasn't supposed to buy anything for this bonnet, but it's gonna look so much better without it being pieced in this particular case because of the way that this is structured. So I guess I lied. <laughs> I don't regret it. This means that I can actually get this completely covered and start working on my fashion fabric tonight. That puts me a day ahead, well worth the $10 I spent today. Take it as you will, everything else is going to be stash. So let's uh, get down to the board and get started. Time for the mulling. Firstly, note that you need to cut the seam allowance off for one of the brim pieces only. Then you need to clip notches into the curve of the one with seam allowances. Then spray the adhesive onto the felt. Definitely do it outside. This stuff stinks and it gets everywhere. So make sure you cover your surfaces. You may want to wear some disposable gloves for this too because I had sticky black schmutz on my fingers for the rest of the day from this stuff. Carefully adhere the felt to the hat base, smoothing it out as you go, and then press up your notched seam allowance so it sticks to the inside. Repeat with the other pieces. I did the top of the crown next and then let it dry for a bit. Next was the top of the brim. Once that was dry, I wrapped the crown portion on and smoothed out the edges. My pieces don't quite match. I don't know what happened, but no biggie, I just trimmed off the excess. 
Alternatively, if you don't want to deal with the adhesive, you can hand baste all the pieces of felt. Then it was time to add the fashion fabric layer. I started by hand basting on the top of the crown. Then I basted one back edge on and covered it with the other side of the back edge. This seam will be seen, so if you're doing this, use very neat, very invisible stitches. Once those were finished, I basted both the top and the bottom of the crown. Now to add the brim. I'm starting with the top this time. Like the felt piece, I'm marking and notching the seam allowances. But on both pieces of the fashion fabric, not just one. Start on one side and pin, smoothing everything out as you go and matching the edges best you can. Then baste both the top and the bottom of the brim. Don't worry about that raw seam allowance, that'll get covered later in the process. Once that's done, we can tackle binding the edges. I cut some 1 and 5 8 inch strips to do this. Fold the binding in half and iron, then fold each raw edge under and iron. Finally, fold back in half and, you guessed it, iron. If you're lazy, use pre-made bias tape. Then pin the bias tape over all the raw edges and sew on both sides. Use a tunnel stitch and try to be as delicate as possible so it looks nice. All right. Last night I sewed all the binding onto the bonnet, so that's binding around the top of the crown, binding along the edge of the brim, and binding along the back. The rest of the raw edges are going to be encased either by ribbon or on the inside by the lining. I will say I really don't like the way the binding looks. Part of that is just my impatience as a hand sewer. I was trying to get it done and I could have had finer, neater stitches, but I think it looks messy. And I also think it took like three times as long as it would have if I had just put seam allowances on everything and sewn it together and then sewn it onto the bonnet. I get that that was the historical technique, but to me, it was a really illogical move on my part, especially because I'm doing this uh, pretty quickly, right? It is what it is. This is a learning experience. This is my first bonnet. It won't be my last bonnet. So I'm going to bank that information for next time and we're going to move on. So the ultimate goal for today is to get everything finished. That's completely finished the bonnet and completely finished the pelerine. Whether that's going to happen, probably not. We all know that time tends to move faster than we expect it to. So in the very least, I would like to at least assemble all of the things on the machine. So that's assembling the pelerine completely, sewing the neck guard and the lining and the ribbons, and then hand stitching on the ribbon and the neck guard and inserting the lining. So I think that that's probably a more feasible goal, but I really am going to try and get as much done as possible so that I can finish this video and get it out to you in time. <laughs> whether that'll happen or not, I mean, if the video will come out on time, but whether or not I'm gonna have some time to relax before then. That is the question. Cross your fingers for me and let's get working. Okay, challenge set. The Pelerine is straightforward and simple. An instant gratification project if there ever was one. First, I seamed the orange side together. Then I pinned the collar pieces together and stitched along the outside edge. Then I clipped all the corners. This is a pain, but don't skip this step. Then I turned it right side out and ironed everything down. Next, I pinned the collar to the orange side of the cape. and basted it with the machine. I placed the ivory side on top, pinned everything down except a small opening in the bottom, and stitched that sucker down. Then it was clippy clip curve time yet again before I turned everything out through the opening at the bottom. Handy tip, use something pointy like a chopstick to push out them pesky corners. Then it was a rendezvous with the iron to smooth out my seams. And then it was done and ready for trim. Back to the bonnet. First, the lining. I assembled the crown lining top with the crown side lining. Not following directions here, I'm doing this my own way. Line up the edges all the way around and sew. Once that's done, I sewed the center back seam, which I forgot to film. The pattern calls for two yards of one inch ribbon and 2.2 yards of one and five eighths inch ribbon. I didn't have that, so I cut strips from my ivory fabric twice each width plus an inch for seam allowance. For the side ribbons, which are the one inch ones, I just sewed them together as tubes and left one edge open and the other edge I sewed at a 45 degree angle to get a point. The wider ribbon I sewed with both ends at a 45 degree angle and left a portion of the center of the ribbon open to turn out. This is a much easier way of turning out than the other. I wasn't thinking and I forgot to sew yarn into my tubes for the one inch ribbon. Big mistake, it took me almost an hour to turn one of those out. Onto the neck guard, fold in half hamburger and sew both the short edges. Turn right side out and press. 
then run two sets of basting stitches along the top edge and gather to fit the back markings. Pin and sew down. The one inch ribbon gets pinned to the markings on each side of the bonnet. Stitch down by hand, again taking care to make your stitches neat and almost invisible. Then lay the wider ribbon over the brim's seam allowance and stitch similarly. Good news, I got almost everything done last night except for a couple of things that I still have to hand sew. Unfortunately, I forgot to film it because I was so hyper focused on getting it done that it just didn't even cross my mind. I'm sorry, y'all. But I'm going to explain to you what I did and hopefully y'all can follow along. If you have any questions for me, please leave me comments down below and let me know. I'd be happy to answer them about what I did for the process, how I made the bows, etc. The first thing I did was sew all of the ribbons down. So the side ribbons and then the front band and those are just slip stitched on. The leftover ribbon in the back of the band ribbon, I decided to tie into a bow. I then added a little felt bat that matches the felt bats on my actual bat dress and then as I was fiddling around I had some extra spotted tool so then I put a little kind of loopy loop right above that just to add pizzazz. The next thing I had to do was lay in the neck guard so this just gets sewn I back stitched it I wanted it to be kind of sturdy you're not gonna see it because it gets covered by the lining. So the next thing I did was decorate the crown so the one side I knew I wanted to use the the black bat ribbon that that started this whole crazy idea. So I made a bow with that using some of the white ribbon that I made while I was making the other ribbon. I can't tell you how big it is. I think it's like, I don't know, like three quarters of an inch wide. I didn't measure, I just picked random strips that I had laying around and made ribbon out of it. And then I tacked the other glitter bat onto that and stuck it on one side. Now I felt like it was a little uneven, so I took the last remaining white ribbon I had and made like a loop-de-loop -loop and put it on the other side to give myself a little bit of balance. I kind of liked it like that, but this is the 1830s and bonnets are crazy in this time period. Of course they are, everything else is crazy. I then took some of my leftover tool and did a different shorter loop-de-loop -loop over top. I still kind of wish I had like a flower or something to put over where I sewed it, but I don't have anything that size, so it's just living its naked life right now. But I did add one of my cute little spider brooches that I inherited from somebody. I just thought that was super cute. So that is basically all of the decorations. After I got all the decorations in, then I just went ahead and laid in the lining and sewed the lining in the top. Pretty straightforward, slip stitched it shut, covers all of the raw seams, any wires that were still exposed. So that's where we're at now. Um, I am going to put a couple of combs in there just to keep it steady on my head. The ties hold it pretty well, but I don't trust myself. I mean, I do this all the time. I, I need it to be secure. Yeah, let's get this thing finished. I'm also in mid Halloween to Christmas transition and the wall looks really, really blank behind me. Deal with it. It'll, it'll be snazzy in a little bit, I promise. The instructions say to close the pelerine with a hook and eye, but when I put it on, I didn't like the aesthetic of it, so I'm doing what I did with my chaos cape and making two little loops. If I'd been thinking, I could have tucked these into the seam when I was making the darn thing, but I wasn't, so after I made my tubes, I pinned them and will hand stitch them down as neatly as possible so it looks good on both sides. Finally, I decided to add trim to the bottom of the pelerine because it's the 1830s and like your holiday decorations, it ain't done till it's overdone. I pinned the two inch black lace to the orange side because I think that's the side I'll use the most. I'll then carefully hand stitch it down so that it doesn't show on the other side. And then I thought, what the hell, let's put it on the collar too. Oh my God, I got it done. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for sticking with me. I appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time to hang out with me today. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing if you haven't already, and maybe saying hello down in the comments. These small things go a huge way toward getting my weird little channel seen, and I have so many fun projects to share with you in the upcoming months. All right, let's go frolic some.
so excited about this. Quite apart from being a little warmer at the event, which is a huge bonus, there's just something about having the accessories to an era that make it feel so much more real. I don't always have time to make those for the video reveals, but they make such a difference. Psst, hey! Editing Jackie here. I just wanted to say another quick thank you for sticking with me to the end of this video. I upload every other Thursday. If you haven't seen already, for the past couple of days, I've been running polls in the community tab to see what my best make of 2022 was. I love to hear everyone's opinions and it really matters to me. So if you haven't already, please check them out and vote. I post a new project every day. It's going to run from now through December 13th. On December 14th, I'm going to pick the four most popular of my makes and we're gonna run one more poll through the 16th to find out what my best make of 2022 was. In a future video I'm going to plan a fun little reboot so it does matter this is for science. Yes science! And I would really love to hear from you. Again if you haven't voted already you can check out my community tab. I believe all of the previous polls are going to be up there so as long as you vote before December 14th your vote will count and then we'll do the greatest hits ones through the end of the 16th so I can get Get it filmed on the 17th. All right, back to regularly scheduled Jackie. As far as difficulty is concerned, the Pellerine, not including the trim, took a mere 20 minutes to assemble, if that. It was such a quick, easy project. But the bonnet, well, hats in general are not really beginner's projects. Working with buckram and wire is hard on your hands and requires some skill and maneuvering. That being said, if you've, say, made a corset or a pair of stays successfully, you can probably make a hat like this without too much struggle. Just learn from my mistakes. I don't regret my small purchase for this project. I know that means I technically lost the challenge, but given I only used about half a yard of the felt, that was about 50 cents, and maybe I used a dollar's worth of spray adhesive. That's chump change. It would have been such a pain to hand sew all those tiny little pieces of felt in a way that the joins were invisible, so no regrets. I'm quite happy with the way this turned out and can't wait to wear it in public. If you aren't already, make sure you're following me on Instagram if you want to see footage from the festival. My handle is at Fantastical Follies Costuming, all one word. I plan to take lots of pictures since I totally forgot to take any at my last event. Whoops! And you can be sure that there is a late bustle era gown and undergarments coming next year for this festival in the future. Between Black Snail and Laughing Moon, I have all the underpinnings covered, but if anyone knows of any good bodice, skirt, and bustle overskirt patterns appropriate for something between 1882 and 1885 that aren't from Truly Victorian, please let me know in the comments because I'm having a hard time finding something like what I want. Tentative plan is to recreate this striped gown from about 1883 or 1884, though I may change my mind about that. There is a lobster gown that I kind of love. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. That's about it for me today. I need to get back to noodling out my mantua. Catch y'all later.